de Janeiro, Brazil, famous for carnival, samba, and the most beautiful beaches in the world. We're at the Carioca One Arena, home of the 2016 Summer Olympics, and today, the site of the 2022 Street League Super Crown Championship, men's last chance qualifier, where 17 of the world's best skateboarders will be vying for four spots into tomorrow's Super Crown Final. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I'm Paul Zitzer, along with the 2011 Super Crown Champion, Sean Malto. Before we get into it, let's take a look at the road to the Super Crown to see how we got here and where things stand currently. The top four skaters in gold on the left of your screen are pre-qualified into tomorrow's Super Crown final. Gustavo Ribeiro, Vincent Milou, Chris Joslin, and Yuto Horigome. They all got in based on tour points this season. Everybody else is gonna be vying for four more spots out of today's last chance qualifier. Now, Sean, who are you looking for to make it through to tomorrow? I mean, I'm hyped to see all the Brazilian skaters out here in this hometown crowd. I mean, Luan Oliveira got a standing ovation just walking into this place. He's been a veteran on Street League, and he definitely knows what it takes to get to the finals. Also, you can't forget about Felipe Gustavo. He has so many tech tricks, and he can do them on these bigger obstacles, so that's going to put up a really, really good score. And then there's last year's 2021 Super Crown champion, getting it done as a rookie, Jagger Eaton from the USA. He's got all the tricks, crazy consistency. He's just trying to get back to the finals today. I think he's got a really good chance at it. Now let's send it down to the third member of our crew, Andrew Cannon. Thanks, guys. This course down here is gigantic. We look at Vegas. That course was a lot smaller. We're really opening things up here down in the arena. The energy in here is awesome. All the skaters are really excited. You can see it in their practice. The crowd is getting so stoked, like Sean said, giving that standing ovation to Lawan. I think the skateboarding we are about to see is going to be next level. Take it back to you. How did you get this? Yeah, the, the crowds in Brazil are the best in the world. They go crazy for skateboarding. And with the Brazilian skaters on the course today, it's going to be a pretty entertaining day. Now, let's talk about how SLS works with the basics brought to you by Bow Clothing. There are two sections to Street League, the line section and the single trick section. Each skater gets two 45 second lines followed by four single trick attempts anywhere on the course. A skater's best line score counts and their two best single trick scores count. They're added together for a skater's final score and then the top four skaters will advance into tomorrow's final. And now it's time to meet the skaters in heat number one here at the last chance qualifier. Alec Majerus will be first in from the U USA. Winner of Tampa Am back in 2012, been on the scene ever since. And the Sean Malto pick, Luan Oliveira. The crowd is going off in here. A Brazilian legend. Two-time SLS winner to boot. And out of Canada, doing that Red Dragon thing, Ryan Desenzo trying to get to the final, trying to get his first ever podium. And Manny Santiago from Puerto Rico, Mr. Excitement, Mr. Energy. He's gonna feed off this crowd like it's some sort of giant lunch platter. Manny Santiago. So four skaters in heat number one. It's a four cut today. That's a harsh cut, Sean. Yeah, I mean, a lot of talented people, not a lot of spots to make it. It's gonna be very, very, very exciting. Advice for somebody coming in, first run, what do you do? You just gotta try to tune everything out, you know? Yes. Trust the process, trust your body. How did you do it? Would you just imagine, like, I'm just at a session with my bros, or I, what? I tried to smile and talk as much as I can just to make it seem like a normal session. Turn. All right, Alec Majerus is in first line. Oh, hitting that huge 
huge bump to Haba. And not doing anything easy on it either. No, he has off to a very good start. You got to get into the corners of this contest to get speed. Because oh. unlike Las Vegas, this course is massive. This course is big. I'm sure it looks big on TV, and it's even bigger in person. I walked around this place and was a little scared. <laughs> yeah, big obstacles spread out. Lots of options. But we were saying earlier in the women's qualifier, maybe not as good for a super technical skater, better for somebody who's trying to get super buck, maybe. Yeah, you know, I think this course does call just for bigger, easier tricks. Because it is, these obstacles are bigger, these spots are bigger, and you have to get in the corner and kind of fight for speed to get the, uh, to get the lines. So Alec with the 3.6, not a big score on that first run. He's gonna have to clean that up. Luan Oliveira has to be feeling a lot of nerves skating in front of this crowd, because they want to see it from him. Everybody wants to see it from him. Yeah. And Luan has been on the podium in Super Crowns before two times. Never had a Super Crown win. Could happen this weekend. Luan looking focused. Got time for one more if. So he put that whole run together until the buzzer, but that was the big move in the run. Yeah, unfortunately he's gonna need that front side flip to have a chance making it through the qualifier. Putting down a nice kick flip back nose grind there. Shifty, straight into the 180 switch crook. The Christmas grind. <laughs> Five point eight. Decent run score for Luan considering there was a fall in that run. Desenzo on deck. He's been having a good year. He finished fourth in Seattle. That was the first time he'd been in a final since 2016. That was the Super Crown back in Los Angeles. But you know, if Ryan stays on, he does amazing. And this is a big course, and he likes to go big. Yeah, it's actually a really good course for him. Mm. So get the Nolly heel up the Euro out of the run. Go from there. It's a good way to make it up. <laughs> Very late. 270. Better late than never, I guess. Right? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Gapping up. Nose blunt on that massive hubba. There's a good four foot gap from the end of the launch ramp to, to that hubba. And it starts at about eye level. Gap out front nose grind. That's Desenzo all day. Switch blunt. Classic switch blunt. Tray flip down the set mid run is definitely a risky move. Yeah, I, I think flipping your board downstairs is, is always risky in a contest. 6.2, great run score Risk. for Desenzo. Risky anytime, I guess. Huh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. All right, Manny Santiago. We always talk about how much energy he has, how stoked he is, and he feeds off the crowd. This, this is where he can get it done. When this crowd starts giving him some 
Well, they're not going to give him much feedback for that. But if he gets on a roll and you start to see that energy building, that's where, where you see Manny at his best. Yeah, Manny is, he is the most focused, the most dedicated person I've ever met. And it's so close to translating into these contests. He just hasn't put it all together yet. But once he does, I have a feeling he's going to string together a few wins. Yeah, here he's picking it back up after a first trick fall. Got right back into it. Time for one more. Close. So, a fall to start, a fall to end. That's not gonna hurt his, help his score. But if he can put it together in his next line, good line, I mean, he's going for it. He is definitely trying some really hard tricks. But we all talk about this, you know, the, the day of the contest, day before the contest, we try to figure out what you need to average to make it to the finals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you I've got to have to aim for that spot. I've got some answers from this year. Uh, in Jacksonville, it took an 8.2 average to make it to the final. Um, it, same in Seattle. And, and in Las Vegas, it was a little lower, 7.2 average to make the cut. So that's doable for all these guys, every single person here. It's doable, yeah. It's definitely, you know, averaging an eight is pretty hard, though. Yeah. You, they, they are the best in the world, so yes, it's not easy. Um, and then we should point out, that's, we're talking about eight cuts in those other contests. This is a four cut, so by default, you gotta assume the score is gonna be high. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Gap out, nose grind, into the Bennett grind. Shout out, Matt Bennett. Yes, sir. So struggling a little bit on his second run, Alec Majerus, but putting, sound, putting down some good moves. That front nose grind. Anything better than that 3.6 on his first run score helps him, because you gotta take one run score into your final score. So there you go, 3.8. It's not great, but it's a little better. Luan. So what do you think? Does he go back and just try to just make this run with the frontside flip at the end? I think so. This run is really, really good. And if he lands that frontside flip, it's definitely going to be, you know, up there. Icing on the cake. Yeah. Oh, no! He Pop that too hard. That's the way he skates. Explosive. So it's Christmas grind, even if it's front side, not just back side, huh? Either side. That's both. <laughs> Tail slide, but then a little extra. A little present. All right comes down to this. Has to hustle a little bit. Uh, so, the front side flips. That's one of his signature moves. But that's a mega launch. And with the nerves and putting it at the end of the run, how do your legs feel at the end of the run? Oh man, it depends. Luan. Luan takes care of himself, he works out. I'm sure he's in great shape, but it's just legs are always a little shaky in these scenarios. Yeah. Proper, nollie front nose grind. Easy one for Luan. He looks like he gets it. He's glad he made some tricks. Wishes he could have landed that last one, but also relieved to have that line section out of the way. 5.0. So the, that first run score of a 5.8 is not bad. No, it's manageable. Desenzo up on top with a 6.2. Where do we go from here? 
He's just got to make that Nolly heel up the Euro. Oh, okay. Kick flip front lip to start things off. That's big time. Yes. Textbook. So he's got it going here. Ten seconds left. Finish strong. Okay. Yes, and the, the kick flip over the pump bump at the end to finish it. So his first run score of a 6.2 is going to go away. He's going to replace it with something much higher, I'm assuming. How high do we go? Do you want to make a prediction, or you just want to talk about that run? That has to be big. I mean, 36-year-old legend Ryan Desenzo. Tiger, Tiger Cam, Cam. kickflip, live. That's <laughs> sick. He, I mean, that run, that's, that's the bar. You set it in the first heat, you have to put up a really good score in the first heat to try to make it through all the other ones. And I think he did that right there. That has to be a high eight, if not a nine. You called it. 8.8. .8. That is a great score for Ryan Desenzo. He's been really just looking solid this year. He's had a few years where he wasn't getting close to making any of the cuts, and then he's back. We got back-to-back -back two oldest people in street league right here. Ryan Asenzo straight to Manny Santiago. Okay. The crowd feeling that one. And this is where we get this is where we get Manny into his groove here. Manny's delight. 360 shove, lip slide. No! Ah. Oh. Break out a signature Manny move right here. Yes! Front shot feeble. <laughs> Uh, he knows. Yeah. He had it going, and then a, just two. I mean, every fall is untimely. But definitely took the wind out of that run. Front shove feeble. Don't see that one too often. No. Unless you skate with Manny, then you see that one off. <laughs> That's true. That thing's flying on every spot. Five point three. He he definitely has single tricks that can boost up his points. There's our current leader, Ryan Desenzo, after the line section. Single tricks coming up. Street League Skateboarding is brought to you by VB Seguros, Pratudo Que Importa. By Ashok, a modern performance energy drink created for today's active generation. By Cariuma, ethics meet performance. And by Skater XL, the most precise board control ever in a skateboarding game. Available now on PC and consoles. Hello? Hey babe, are you coming home soon? It's getting late. I'm almost done here, I'll be home soon. Listen, I'm getting really worried. You're becoming really obsessed with this. Don't worry, I'm okay. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> 
Breaking news, legendary skateboarder Kelly Hart has been rumored to have purchased a multi-billion dollar facility staffed with a world-class research and development team in hopes to find the 2022 trick of the year. Oh, I think I found something. What do you got? The rumors have sent the public into a frenzy in hopes to be chosen as the lucky winner of the cash prize. I already submitted my clips. What else do you want from me? You think those tricks are worth $10,000? Our sources tell us while there have been some worthy contenders, Kelly is still searching for that perfect trick. You think that that is trick of the year worthy? These are the best submissions we got. Maybe people just don't know how to enter. You're telling me after seven years they don't know how to upload their tricks and hashtag a trick of the year? This is bullshit. Kelly has also been quoted that he will not come out of the facility until the trick of the year is found. If you can't help me find a trick like this, I'm gonna have to find it myself. Some of his close friends and loved ones are beginning to worry about his well-being. We were able to contact Kelly about the contest, but he only gave us one quote, and that is, this shit could change your life. This is Anita Ali with Channel 6 News, signing off and wishing all of you good luck. Godspeed. Oh, my. Welcome back to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Look at that, wow, that's a good time. Hard to find a spot on that beach. That is a great time. It's a good looking wave too. Great looking people down there too. Best people in the world, most passionate fans in the universe. We got a great day of skateboarding ahead. This is the men's last chance qualifier, the SLS Super Crown World Championship from Olympic Park. We just saw the first runs, first and second runs in the line section here in heat one. Single trick still to come. Each skater gets four trick attempts. Two of those attempts are gonna count. Those scores will be added to the highest line score per skater for the final score. Highest score you could hope to get is a 30. So if you got three tens, that'd be an NBD. Uto came close a couple times. That's true. So Alec Majerus in fourth right now. Remember, only four skaters out of this entire last chance qualifier advance to tomorrow. So if you're in heat one, you're gonna be hoping to finish way up in first place. And then you still very well might not make it to tomorrow. Yeah, heat one. You just put up the biggest score you can and cross your fingers. Ah, Luan coming back to this front side flip. He could kick flip nose slide that hubba too. Absolutely. All right, Desenzo. Highest line score of the day so far with the 8-8. This is his first single trick attempt. All right, Manny. In for his first try. Yes! Classic Manny again. That's another trick. Who does that? Very heel back 5 out. His trick list is so out of the normal spectrum. Very heel back 5. What's the hardest part about that trick? <laughs> I mean, whenever burial healing at that thing is hard to aim like you can see he definitely missed the edge but he was so in control that he was able just to still land it
Manny's always talking too. He is, <laughs> there is never a time when he's not talking. In fact, Tampa Am is next month. He's uh, the next week actually. Uh, he's announcing Tampa Am. He'll be there with T-Puds. Oh, that'll, that'll be fun to watch. Yeah. Manny and T-Puds. Yes. And uh, so that very heel manual was good for a five. Tori Pudwell is my neighbor. Huh? I didn't know that. What a, what a great dude. He's tuning in right now, I'm sure. All right, Alec Majerus kicking that one away. Luan, come on. Let's get this. He's focused, he's ready for it. Gives you a good feeling. Nobody from Brazil wants to bail in front of this crowd. Here's the visible replay, textbook Luan. Biting that landing just a little bit, but still perfect. Yeah, that was... It's a big drop. That's a big drop. Look at how hyped he is, the whole crowd behind him, front side flipping off the biggest thing in the park. It'd be awesome to see Luan back in the final. A 7.5 moves him into the first place spot. <laughs> All right. Desenzo needs to make two of his next three attempts to have any kind of shot. Up, moving on to tomorrow. Here we go. Wow. Kickflip crook way up there. Yeah, he looked in way higher on that than I thought a kickflip crook would go down. Kind of, it looked like he maybe missed the flip just a little bit. Just rolled right in there. It really did. Just like barely got in. Bolts on the landing. That's gonna be a huge score, because that, that gap to Hubba is just massive. Anything on it is great, 8.3, there you go. So Desenzo with a commanding lead so far. There's that smile, that's what we come out here for. All right, time for Manny to put down trick number two. Have two more tries. So it's not looking good for Alec Majerus. He has to make this try right here, right now. A lot of kickflip crooked grinds going down around this place. So just like that. Alec will be our first skater out. I mean, he's got one more trick attempt, but it's not gonna matter, even if he got a 10. All right, Luan trying to keep it going here. Keep this crowd stoked. parts about this contest is being so amped up to try something and having to wait. Yes, that's the worst. You have this nervous energy that you need to unleash and to have to keep it bottled up yeah. longer and then your mind's spinning, right? Even that 20 seconds they held them back, that it's hard to keep that going for that long. In terms of what tricks you're gonna try, 
Let's see what least let's see what Desenzo goes for here. Kickflip nose blunt slide. He got the 9.3 this year with a kickflip nose blunt slide. I think he could be getting another one of those if he lands it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, how do you decide what trick you're gonna try? Do you look to anyone else or do you know what you're gonna do in your in your head already? Uh, I mean now this format where they take three scores, I think you know what you're gonna do already most of the time. And then it's just about executing it. Especially in heat one. When you're in heat four and you can kind of see scores, you can play with it a little bit, but you know, when you're trying to get high eights, low, high nines even, you're right. just, there's not a lot of opportunities out there. Missing the flick. That is no fun to travel all the way down here. And you know, and it's not yeah. just that, you want to rip. You want to put it You want to rip. I'm sure Alec could figure out a way to have some fun for Zen Weiss here, though. All right. The crowd is going off. Luan is in. Ah. Kind of a tough start here for heat number one so far. Luan is a legend. So hyped to see him out here. Everybody's excited to see Luan. Thankful for that front side flip. We'll take it. Desenzo is the only skater right now looking set to possibly make final, but he has to put something big down right here. Kind of popped out of that. We're gonna see it again. Talk us through doing that trick. <laughs> I don't know if I'm the best person. To ask. Yes. <laughs> he goes right over the top, and then the hub is not that wide, so definitely took a little precision to get into it. And then look, it kind of wants to shift off, and he pushed it back onto the edge. And just to get the board up over the, the back of that hub, that it's not low. It is. It's <laughs> definitely not. 9.1. So Ryan Desenzo getting his third career nine club in SLS history. Beautiful. In the club. What was your favorite, favorite nine, Sean? Ever? Yeah, ever. Oh, wow. Did you ever put down a nine for the win? Like, boom, that was the nine. Uh, no, I think the only time I got a nine was back over Crook Nolly Flip. Oh, okay. Did that a Two or three times? That was the only nines I've ever got. That's plenty. One yeah. is like, that's a life hammer. <laughs> hey, I'm in the club. Yeah, you are. I'm in the club. Desenzo's overall score, 26.2. Yeah. So, as we were talking about, though, cup making scores, as far as that one goes, it's still on the low side. But as things stand after heat number one here in the men's last chance qualifier, Desenzo up on top with a 26-2, followed by Luan Oliveira, Manny Santiago, and Alec Majeris. So far, so good. Sean, the crowd's stoked. They're, they're filling the place up. We got a long day of qualifiers ahead of great skateboarding. So they're in for a treat. And now we're gonna send it down to Andrew Cannon. Ryan, what a performance out there today, man. What was your mindset coming into it? Well, I knew that it's the Super Crown and everybody's gonna be putting down the hardest tricks. So I just skated kind of like it was the final and 
tried to put down some of my final tricks and hopefully I can, you know, set the bar for the other guys to make it a little bit more challenging to get, to get up there. So you've been doing this for quite some time. You've been skating contests for years. You've been in SLS. What is it this year that has clicked? You are on fire this year. Dude, honestly, I, I might have to give it up to the FP shoes. Like, don't want to just do the sponsor call out, but these FP shoes are working super good. And like, I just have a super consistent flick with them on. So I think that's what it is. Or, I, I don't know. And I can jump with the insoles like for days. So my feet are doing good. And that's what, you know, my feet are doing the magic for me. So. Well, congratulations, man. You're skating amazing. And we really hope you hold tight as you head into finals. Any Anyone you're excited to watch today? Yeah, I'm super excited to watch Jocelyn skate. I want to see the tricks down the gap. Like, deep down inside, I wanted to flick some tricks down that thing, but I didn't know what the scores were going to be. So I stuck to what I knew was going to be like a, a score. So, Well, congratulations. Back to you guys. Thanks, Andrew. Skaters in heat number two are on the course warming up. There's a nice shot of it. California Skate Parks has done it again. And we got a chance to l listen in on what these skaters think of it. I think, it's, I think it's a pretty good course. Personally, it's not really what all I like to skate. I don't really like super big, like, gap the hubs and stuff. But I mean, there's, also, there's a good variety. Oh man, it's super fun. A lot bigger than the last one. Everything's pretty sick. The gap trail is super sick. And then the bump to hubba. Those are my top two faves. First impression I got here was that everything's pretty sizable. What I didn't know what was going to happen is that everything flows really well. I like the banks and the bump to bumps and the ledges. Everything flows, flows well and I'm excited to compete on here. That little bump. That little bump. I've been doing kickflips all the time there. It's pretty fun. It's really fun. I think that in the finals, like, like Pamela and Raisa and Luigi, they're all going to go crazy. Favorite obstacle? Good question, man. I like the hubbles. It's like it's kind of steep. You got to get used to it, but uh, it makes it low, so you can actually do some tricks. And even the big rail, it's kind of like a gap to it, but it makes it even better. Like you know, you're not you're not floating your trick on the rail. You got to actually lock in and feel it. So I like that. Crowd is getting hyped here in Rio, as they do. And so far, they've gotten a great display of skateboarding and still plenty to come. Skaters in heat two are warming up. Heat two start list right here. Coming in first will be Mickey Papa, followed by last year's Super Crown champion, Jagger Eaton, then Felipe Mota and Sora Shirai. And we still have two heats after that, heats number three and four. There's the skaters in heat three in this last chance qualifier. Deshaun, Kelvin, Braden Hoban, has been tearing up the tour this year, and Felipe Gustavo, that's a Malto pick. And heat number four, Carlos Ribeiro coming off that win last month in Las Vegas. Shane O'Neill, Jamie Foy, and Alex Midler. So a lot of great skateboarders still to come here in this Super Crown Last Chance Qualifier. Now it's time to meet the skaters in heat number two. And there is Mickey Papa from Vancouver, British Columbia. He's a great dude, having the time of his life out here. SLS Pro since 2016. And last year's Super Crown champion, doing it as an SLS rookie, as his first year on the tour, Jagger Eaton. The youngster. At 15 years old, Felipe Mota is by far the youngest SLS pro. Trying to make his first Super Crown final. And then Sora Shirai from Japan. He won the 2000 tour, 2002 tour qualifier to qualify into the tour this year, and he's been on a tear. He almost won the first stop in Jacksonville. Any predictions for Heat 2, Sean? We got Mickey Papa, Jagger Eaton, Felipe Mota, Sorcerai. Who's gonna, who's gonna top this heat? 
I mean, it's hard to not say Jagger, but I think Sora, his trick selection, the things he can do, no one else can do, and I think he can pull this one out. And Mickey Papa's no slouch either. <laughs> no. He did great last month in Las Vegas. Finished eighth there. This is the Tiger Cam shot. Unfortunately, coming off over the bump to bump. Mickey's one of these guys, his run is, is it builds. It's not about one trick. It's not about one massive like ender. It builds up. He's got to make trick after trick. He puts a lot of tricks together, but when he falls, I, I think that it's his skating doesn't allow for a big comeback. In no, the score. Yeah, and you know, Desenzo put up such a big score. I mean, you got to average at least an 8.7, 8.8 to make it. So. Your run is, once you fall, it's kind of over, you know? It's hard to keep that motivation up. Right. And again, it's a four cut. It's usually an eight, but this one is cutthroat. This is going to the Super Crown final, where the top four skaters in points are already in there. All right, here's your guy. So, yeah, because Jagger seems to have such a good contest mind. He locks it in, he goes. He's going to stay on. <laughs> good call. I, I mean, I, I always say that. Very rarely does he, does he end up falling prey to the announcer curse. He's just so consistent, and he has so many hard tricks. He has, he has a way of wrangling tricks, even when they're not going right, he's, he can bring them back in and land them. Such hard tricks. Switch back, lift that gap to rail and run. That's crazy. Oh, and he just squeezes that one in at the buzzer. A perfect run. Former champ. Yes, defending. Defending champ. champ. So, Desenzo's run was an 8-8. Where does this stack up? Visible replay, back when 80 knows, grime fake, he did it all. He did it all. He hit almost everything as well. He had flip tricks, the big rail. This has to be pretty close to that Desenzo run. Eight point six. So he's in the mix. Felipe Mota on deck. He's like a, like a prodigy. He just kind of grew into being a street league pro. He hasn't had quite the success he's been looking for yet, though. Uh, he has a lot of time ahead of him. Yeah, it's amazing to see it you know, someone like Luan, how he started in the street league and what he became and what he is now. And then seeing Felipe Moto being young and at the start of it. And we're, we're seeing this star come out here and, and crush it. Wow. Starting it out with a gap to Hurricane. <laughs> that front crook maybe could have Took a couple pointers from Funa's run on that one. What? Kick flip front blunt. Oh! Felipe putting it together. Suski. Aaron Suski. Talk about a rare one. Talk about that run. That, in my mind, that was the best run we've seen today so far. 
I mean, Which he had part? everything. I mean, all of it. Yeah. Kick with back tail, kick with front one, hurricane the big rail. And the crowd is chanting. We got Tiger Cam just for the chance. Kick flip back tail to straight on that steep hubba. So hard to do. Nine club on the run section. It is such an almost impossible task to get a nine in the runs in school. He definitely deserved it. That's awesome. Job well done. I was going to have to go talk to Mike Mo myself if that wasn't a nine. <laughs> That was just the start. Front hurricane. Primitive hat, primitive tee. Make a P-Rod proud out there. He still has one more line. <laughs> Three sets. Three ones. Aisa giving him a big hug. Sora Shirai finished second in Jacksonville behind Utah. That's his best finish. His first year as SLS Pro. Lofty tray. Casual today, taking taking his time. <laughs> Ooh, the sugar cane was that? Was he trying back sugar cane? He was definitely trying sugar cane. Huh. So he's calling it. Looking to his second run. I noticed the crowd, they really liked what Sora did. If it was a Brazilian, they would have loved it. <laughs> yeah. We can, uh, we can definitely tell the difference between the Brazilian skaters and the yeah. non-ones. It is like the rare place where there feels like there's a home, hometown advantage or, you know, home crowd giving you the extra juice. That's rare. Oh, that is rare, but these fans here, have so much pride in their country. So awesome to see. There's that Nolly heel on the Tiger Cam. So Mickey's first run score was not even a one. It was a .8. Um, this run has to be better than that already. But he's going to have work to do. Yeah. Because it's a four cut. Wow. Last 20 seconds helped him a lot. Yeah. So right now, Felipe Moda is in fourth. That's the, that's the cut spot with a nine even. It's after one score. Another look at Mickey, kickflip front board. Mickey's at his best when he's doing a kickflip into a ledge trick or rail trick. Any trick, kickflip, yeah. done. That's just part of it. It's like incidental. Five point nine, decent score. 
it's going to be really tough for him to make make it to the final tomorrow with that run score. But Mickey, if anyone, can do it. Jagger Eaton. Karyuma fun fact, Jagger starred in Jagger Eaton's Mega Life on Nickelodeon. That's when he and his brother used to be Mega Ramp kids and blasting 900s 40 feet in the air. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Uh, a side note, uh, that was executive produced by the man himself, Rob Deerdick. So a lot, there's a lot happening there. Deerdick just putting together all of these skate things for us. Yeah, he doesn't, he's not sleeping. Wow, kickflip backside lip slide for Jagger. Working that pump up, coming back for the kickflip 50. Time for one more. With the fist pump. Very calculated, very calculated, perfectly timed finish with the big spin board fakie right at the buzzer. Yep. Classic Jagger. Kick flip, back lip, the gap to rail. Mid run. Definitely has to score higher than the switch back lip, right? I would say so. I, it depends who you are, I think. The, the, hey, the switch back lip is actually, less common. Tied. I, I personally liked the switch back lip more. Just because I felt like the switch back lip into the kick turn on the little twinkie roller thing, it just like flowed a little better, but. All right, Felipe Moda coming off the best line of the day so far with the nine. So this run's gonna be a throwaway. Unless. <laughs> unless he's about to unleash some things we could never even have imagined. Well, so. Definitely wasn't gonna be that tail slide. Skating is a lot about momentum, right? One good trick can get you so juiced for the next one that you decide you're not gonna fall on it no matter what happens. Or you fall on a trick, and then in your head you're like, I can't, there's no way I'm gonna make a trick ever again in my life. <laughs> yeah, there are those mental swings, definitely. But he did come back with the kickflip back tail, which, I mean, he has one of the most consistent kickflip back tails in the world. Yeah, kickflip back tails, kickflip front blunts. Such a good flick into that. So whatever the score is, won't matter. With Sora Shirai coming in next, currently down in eighth place with a 2-3. Forget that, he's gonna come back, try to put down 45 seconds of perfection. He, he hasn't no done that much yet. Uh-uh. Okay. But that, that's big. <laughs> that's the hardest trick that's gone down on that rail so far. Oh, getting loose on that 180 switch back grind. And last trick. Back board. <laughs> we, we always talk about, like, ah, he's got his, he's got his line timed perfectly. Uh, I guess he didn't have that one timed as well because he had one more trick left and forgot yeah. maybe what he was going to do. Okay. He needed to walk a little slower to that sugar cane. <laughs> <laughs> this, 
This trick's crazy. That is, I mean, this line score is gonna be good just because of that. So no falls, but he did have the stroll and he did have a backboard at the end, you know? Yeah. It, it wasn't as action-packed as some of the others, so that's why you see the 6.9. Felipe Mota, highest line score of the day, 9.0. As we'll be moving into single tricks, heat number two. But first, download the official Street League skateboarding mobile game, loved by skaters all over the world. True control, true skill, true skate. Super Crown champion from Jacksonville last year, Jagger Eaton, trying to make it back to the Super Crown final here in Rio. And there is a look at all the Super Crown world champions going back to 2013. One name appearing on there a lot. Six-time winner, Nigel Houston. And we're again wishing Nigel a speedy recovery from that knee surgery. Jagger Eaton, last year champ, and then we got 2016 Shane O'Neill. 2015 Kelvin Hoffler won it as a rookie. In 2013 it was Chris Cole, and then I gotta, I gotta go earlier than that. In 2011 it was Sean Malta. <laughs> where's that on the graphic? Yeah, where's, uh, we gotta scroll down a little bit <laughs> to find my name. I mean, come on, we're, we go back to 2010. <laughs> Nija won uh, back then too, so. I mean, Nija, that's so impressive to see his name that many times on this. He's been so dominant over the years. We definitely wish him a speedy recovery. It's not the same without him here. And if you're listening, Nija, heal up soon, and we can't wait to see you. Yeah, so Nija Houston won six Super Crown championships. Um, no one else has won more than one time. So that's an interesting fact. No one's repeated besides Nigel? In the Super Crown, In the correct. Super Crown. All right, just a quick note. So apparently, Sean, you didn't, yours wasn't a super crown. It was maybe the world championship then. This was pre-super crown. Day. So that's uh, the discrepancy. So it's not- the asterisk, don't yeah. <laughs> There we go. Mickey Papa in for his first of four. Jagger Eaton. In next. Had a great run score with the 8-6. Looking to become the second person to repeat mm -hmm. the Super Crown. Ooh, switchback Smith. Such a respectable trick on a long round rail to be able to hold that the way he does. So good. What's the key to a switch backside Smith? Not even on that, just on anything. 
the, the, just got to have a strong back foot. Just hold it. Okay. I feel like shoulders would have a lot to do with yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's, it's weird. It's one of those where you want to push it out in front of you, but you can't let it get too far ahead. 8.4, huge score for Jagger. So he is getting done what he came to do. Felipe Moda coming off the highest line score of the day. He's got four single trick attempts. The key is to make at least two. You see the frustration. There's perfect focus and confidence before that first attempt, and then off you go. It's like, okay, now what? <laughs> go back to it? Yes. But make it. But land it. Yeah. Amazing. We see people do the one, the, the Christmas, which way, 180 switch crook, but very rarely into just a straight fakey grind, right? Like, and that's what I was saying about Sora. He does things that no one else does. And so it's amazing to see he was bringing his own original ideas into this course. And there was a talk about him with this course being so big, can he do some of those tricks on these spots? And he's proven to be able to handle it. So that was much needed because that he had that great run that ended up with the 6.9 club. Hey now, 9.1. Judges feel that one. And Sora moves into third. He's trying to make up for that 6.9 in the runs. And Mickey Papa back in, top of the order. Second try. Nope. <laughs> Jagger Eaton in next. Where does he go next? Got the 8-6 and the 8-4. One more good score puts him in a very good spot. Backside flip, nose grind. Definitely gapped out pretty far on that. Another look. Ah, I'm gonna take that back. That was looking pretty good. It just caught the truck at the at the end. He was kind of like in a no man's wheel wheel lock zone. But bolts, bolts. at the end of the day. Perfect. But That's how he does it. It is the hubba, so they're gonna judge it a little lower, but 8.5 is a good, good score. So now Jagger Eaton in second, creeping on Desenzo. Felipe Moda trying to keep the hype going after that first line score of a nine even. Yes! <laughs> what? <laughs> what a young legend. The crowd gets it. Visible replay. Big spin, front hurricane. Who does that? Not a lot of people. And holding it and locking it and grinding that long. Incredible. He's going to stay in the club. He is staying in the club. Wow. All right. One more of those. <laughs> He's going to be looking really good. So the only reason Felipe Moda is not in first place 
is because he only has two scores locked in so far. The nine on the line, and the nine on that big spin hurricane. Three scores count. Jagger and Desenzo up in one and two, both have three scores on the board. Sora Shirai. some of that magic from Jacksonville with the cab back tail big spin. He knows he needs those massive scores because of that 6-9 in the line. Yeah, he just tried to big spin out a little too early. He was still had a couple more feet to slide. All right, Mickey needs a lot. So again, three bails, he's gonna be out. He'll have one more try for the glory. But no chance of making it. Jagger Eaton in second place. A 9.2 puts him in first. So he's focused on that gap out to rail. Switch back lip, kick flip back lip, and now a switch back over crook. Switch over crook. He actually did that very well. You know you do something good when you get that little pop out like that. He's definitely excited about it. So anything better than that 8-4 is gonna help his case to make yeah. it to tomorrow. Whether he ends up in first or not, he needs higher scores. Yeah, there you go, 9.0. He stays in second, but now is a 26.1 overall score. Moda make his first SLS final. Oh. He's gonna have one more chance to put that down. And if he does, I think the, the deal has been sealed. Yeah. If he doesn't, then no. Sora. It looked like maybe he was trying to hang on to that one, slide it a little longer that time. Yeah, Rail's just so tall and long. And again, that angle kind of curving in like that. It's, it's tough. Mickey Papa with the kickflip front feeble for the crowd. Unfortunately, only putting up two scores, so. Mickey's blown kisses. Thanking Rio. That fast flick locked in at the top. Dip the front feeble. So that put a smile on Mickey's face. 8.6 great score. Good enough to move him up into fifth place, but it's not gonna matter. Jagger Eaton. Redo. It doesn't count until you pop the tail. So he 
will be trying to get rid of that 8.5. Anything better than that helps. 8.7 moves them all the way into first place. And I'm gonna be honest, I, would not, I wouldn't be comfortable with 26.1 with two more heats left. Oof. Yeah, because... I mean, he, he has a chance, but there yeah, for are sure. a lot of really good skaters coming up. And Felipe Moda still has another try that can bump him down. And there's only four spots open. Deshaun Jordan's coming up, Kelvin Hoffler, Braden Hoven, Felipe Gustavo, and on and on. So yes, you're right. Felipe Moda, it comes down to this. Can he do it in front of this Brazilian crowd? 8.3 moves him into first. That is such a bummer to see after putting in a nine in the line and then a nine with that big spin hurricane and not being able to finish it. Ah, frustrating. But a valiant effort from the youngest SLS pro, Felipe Mota. Final skater here in heat number two. He needs, it doesn't matter about the 2.1 for third. He needs a big score. Oh, and he doesn't get it. Came so close. So close. I mean, that just shows you how hard this contest can be. These are two guys, Felipe and Sora, both had nines. Yeah. And couldn't really pull it off. How about, how about the fact, though, that Felipe and Sora are currently in the top four without three scores? So that, that's going to help the skaters in the next few heats. That's Jagger Eaton signing some autographs for the fans there, currently in second place. Last year's Super Crown champ, hoping to make it back to the final with that 26.1 that he has. Here's our current standings after two heats and the last chance qualifier. Ryan Desenzo up on top with a 26.2 overall, closely followed by Jagger Eaton and then you see a huge drop off in those scores. Felipe Moda down in third, but the score of an 18 is probably not gonna hold. So we're gonna send it down to Andrew Cannon. Thanks gang, I'm down here with Jessica Alexander, the athletic trainer in the A-Shock Recovery Lounge. Jessica, I wanna know, what are the most common things you're treating in that lounge? Oh, Andrew, so many things. Um, we see a lot of strained groins, strained hamstrings, um, hip flexor issues, hot pockets galore, you name it. A lot of just regular um, wear and tear from them being out here, but those are the most common for sure. Hip, groin, ankle, some shoulder. Now, who would you say, and it can be men's, women's, who would you say takes it the most serious? Like is in there, getting after it, really taking good care of themselves? There's actually a lot more than you think. Most of these humans are taking their recovery seriously. They're taking their rehab seriously and they're back there. Um, Paul is obviously one of them, Deshaun. They're two of our athletes, so they take it super serious. Sean, Kate, uh, Poe. Yeah, I mean, there's a few. Vincent, like, uh, we have a good roster. Carlos, they're back there doing their rehab. Manny, um, yeah, the, a lot of them. <laughs> do, you, do you have a favorite person that comes back there, either for conversation's sake or anything like that? I mean, Manny's always so pleasant. Manny is so pleasant, and he brings such amazing energy. Sean always brings the banter, and so does Paul. 
Deshaun with his smile, they're great. Um, Poe's fabulous. I mean, honestly, I have such a special connection with each one of these humans. Like, every single one of them that comes in brings something different to the table and brings a different dynamic and energy, and I love it. All right, final final thought here. I want to know who is just taking advantage of the free massage, all right? Who's just, like, going in there just to get the massage? Every single one of them, but uh, definitely maybe Midler. <laughs> But we love Midler. Honestly, they need it, and all of them take the recovery seriously, but also definitely take advantage of me just taking care of them. <laughs> well, thanks for being here and looking after these athletes. This is amazing, and we're so stoked to have you out here. Back to you guys. The progression of skating is just evolving so quickly right now. And I think that the level it's getting at, guys are realizing like, well, the stuff we're doing is requiring like a lot from us physically. Like, and I think collectively as skaters, we're starting to realize like, we are athletes. We're kind of embracing ourselves finally as athletes. Whereas before it was like, we always like fought against that. Nah, I'm a skater, I'm not an athlete, you know? But like, it takes athleticism to do what we're doing. You have to take care of yourself. You have to treat yourself like an athlete or, you're not gonna last very long. So that's what I love about being part of A-Shock is like A-Shock's exactly the same in the energy category where it's like they're evolving the energy category with all like natural ingredients and, and, and cleaner ingredients so that you can actually have that energy boost that you want, but it's a sustainable energy boost. It's a healthy energy boost. Sometimes you would have beverages like they would taste good, but in order to get a good taste, you have to sacrifice good ingredients and have terrible ingredients to get that flavor. And now there's no sacrifice here with that. It's like you have really good, healthy ingredients, great flavor, and you get that boost you want. It's just cool with being with A-Shop well, one, not just like, hey, I got a new sponsor, but like I'm a partner in the brand, you know, I have ownership in the brand. I came in backing it, I believe in it, I'm, I put myself invested with it you know half the time you're dealing with an agency not even actually with the people of the brand but i'm here you know i'm here with scott right here next to me like i'm here talking to the founder you know the owner so it's like i come in the office we can work out in the back here i can throw out ideas if i have ideas you know and just really be involved with how to market myself and how can i be more involved with the marketing of the brand in general so it's really cool because i feel like there's that core kind of relationship but it's like a big brand, so it's a, it's a really cool blend. Welcome back to Olympic Park. It's the 2022 SLS Super Crown World Championship from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And this is the men's last chance qualifier. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And today, we have a very special guest along with us, Street League Royalty, straight up, Paul Rodriguez. What's up, guys? How Thanks. you doing? Ah, we're doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well as well. <laughs> what have you been up to? What brings you to this part of the world? Uh, Street League brings me to this part of the world. I've yeah. just been up to riding my skateboard and doing what I normally do, and I'm just happy to be here with my guys and mm -hmm. hanging out and watching some amazing skateboarding what what is it how is it for you to be back in street league this year we saw you skate a couple of times yeah. what's that been like uh it's been really beautiful really nostalgic and just it's just fun to be back in there have that adrenaline and just i haven't had that for a while so it's, it's been really cool i mean you're a legendary dude paul we love to see you Thanks, out there Sean. <laughs> how about this do you got any favorite memories being on tour with this guy this legend here <laughs> I oh. leaned on Paul a lot in these contests. I talked to him. <laughs> he always jokes around. We always say, finish strong. Finish, finish strong. strong. That's our saying, yeah. That's finish smart. Strong. That's good advice. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you got to do what you got to do. All right, we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep you in the booth. Thanks for being here, Paul. Yeah, Stoked my pleasure. To have you. Thank you guys for having me up here. So Heat 3, about ready to skate in this last chance qualifier. First skater in of this third heat, Deshaun Jordan. Coming off a great year so far. He's in a better position, I'll tell you that. Love this guy. Great energy, great guy to skate with, great charisma. 
And Calvin Hoffler skating in front of the Brazilian crowd here. They just went crazy for him. 2015 Super Crown Champion. And the new kid who's just blown minds all year long, Braden Hoban for the USA. Could he get his first win here? And could it be a Super Crown Championship? Possibly. You already know, it's Felipe Gustavo from Brazil. Yes, sir. Street League Pro since 2015, still looking for his first win, and he could get it here this weekend in front of this hometown crowd. All right, let's talk about the basics brought to you by Bow Clothing. There are two sections to Street League, the line section and the single trick section. Each skater gets two 45 second lines, followed by four single trick attempts anywhere on the course. A skater's best line score counts and their two best single trick scores, they're added together. And then the top four skaters advance to tomorrow's final. And there's four amazing skaters already there waiting for them. That'll be the Super Crown final tomorrow. But still, two heats of skating to go in this last chance qualifier. Let's go. All right, what's your approach, Paul, when you're coming in for your first run? How do you approach it versus your second run? Uh, I don't approach them any different. I just, I just try to clear my mind and I just kind of take it step by step. Each trick that I have in mind, yeah. I just tell myself, all right, I, I have little cues and I, tell my, my mental cues and I just keep going each trick with the, each cue and try and stay focused in the moment because if you let your nerves get to you, it's not good. And skating is physical and it's mental, but in a contest like this, what put a percentage on the mental. How much of it? Oh, the mental, in my opinion, the mental is way more important than the physical. Like, these guys do this stuff in their sleep every day, in practice, you see it. They do this stuff over and over and over again. But when it comes to the moment when the lights are on you, when it's when it's time, you got to learn how to control your mind. Uh. See, what I noticed about Deshaun is sometimes his first run is a little 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 nervous, and you know he he, he figures it out. I, I want to see if I'm right, but almost always in his second run, he always pulls it. That's what I know about him. He, he gets it, he always gets it together. Shakes the nerves out on the first one. Always, run. always. Brings it back around, run number two. I love the board slide up. He can board slide up just about anything in his path. He's so powerful, so strong. He's so athletic. He's, he's really a phenomenal skater. Five point three. And at this stage, we already know a, a score like that is not gonna do you any favors. You gotta get that thing up to a seven, five, eight, eight, five, nine. All right, let's talk about Kelvin Hoffler. He's won one SLS event in his career. It was, it was the 2015 Super Crown. Super crown. <laughs> yeah, God that's bless. a good one to win. That was a big one. Yeah, I mean, he was on, on, on fire, of course. He can do it. He, I, I feel like he's got to get it done again soon, though. It's been too long. Because you know, that can get in your mind, right? Yes, it can definitely get in your mind. But like that just goes to show like the level of competition. Like These things are not easy to win. And uh, you know, so you need a little bit of luck, but a lot of skill and a lot of focus. So all these things need to come together in the event. Oh. There's only three skaters that have won three or more street league stops ever. That's crazy. You're one of them, of course. Paul Rodriguez, wow. Yuto, and Nija. Good company. Podium. Wow, I can't believe it. I'm one of the three? Yeah. I did not know that stat. That's crazy. <laughs> wow, thank you. You're welcome. That is some good company to be in. I'm so grateful for that. Thank you, God. All right, so Kelvin coming off a few times on his first run. And he's another skater. He's got the mind game locked in. He's almost always good for one run with no falls. Yes, yes. 
he, he, you know, just being a guy who's out there on the course, and uh, he trips me out because, like, I won't see him skate a lot in practice. He just kind of sits there, he looks at the course, and he kind of doesn't do anything. But then when you see him skate when it's time, he pulls it off almost all the time. It's, it's incredible. I don't know how guys like that do it. How about this guy? Oh, I mean, he's just in his zone right now. He's just hitting, hitting his peak right now. I wouldn't even say his peak. He's got a lot more time to go, but he's he's in the zone right now. Braden Hoban, he's uh, he's one to watch. It's 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 interesting though, because it is so rare to see such a raw street skater kid come out and be able to skate in this environment. Well, it is called street league, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yes, it's, but it it's really does. Street league for a reason. It does cater to people who have a lot of contest background. Sure. And, and I don't think he necessarily does, but he's just. He seems to be able to handle it so well. You know, some, there's some people when they're that age and they're in that much of a zone, they skate that much, you can put them in any environment and they're gonna do what they do. And Braden's deep bag of tricks. Mm. He has so many options on any obstacle because of his pop and his power. And it, it's just anything that's in his way, he has multiple high scoring tricks he can do. It's incredible. Blows my mind. It's true though, he gets, he has more options. Uh, he can hit the course in any number of ways. And his flick is just impeccable. He got a nine in the run section back in Jacksonville in his first ever SLS appearance. So. That's how you know when somebody's gonna be trouble, when yeah. when they show up in their first street league, yeah. first time in, under the big lights and they get a nine. That's a problem in a good way. All right, Felipe Gustavo. This, this is my pick. Wow. That's a, that's a, to start off with that, a nollie flip nose side down the hubba, that's risky. I love it. He's here to win. Well, Sean, you said earlier, skaters that skate a little slower and do a few less tricks, all their tricks have to be super heavy. He's that guy. He's like the the, the arch the archetype of that guy. Yeah. Like, put him on the pedestal. A few tricks, but they're all the hardest tricks and all done to perfection, right? Very technical, yes. I see him pulling together in the next run. Sometimes that first run is just to get your nerves out the way. So obviously, this is a great, great stop, especially for Brazilian skaters. Paul, did you have a favorite place to skate on tour? Uh, you know, this is my first time actually being in Brazil for SLS. Um, but I've been to Brazil many times and there's, the, the love is just unmatched in Brazil. In South America in general, like the love that they have for skating and skaters, it's unmatched, I will say. So 4.3 for Felipe Gustavo. We already know what he needs to do. Just clean it up, stay on. Yeah, if he pulls that run, that's gonna be a heavy score. So we're gonna go back to the top of the order for second runs. I'm predicting Deshaun pulls this run. He always pulls in in the last moment. He's a guy who likes pressure. I like this first two trick combo. Yeah, it's really cool. Trey in, and then the opposite, laser. Ah, oh. oh, man. Paul, you start your run with a flip trick? Sometimes, depends on the course, mm -hmm. sometimes. But I'm the type of guy I like to like build momentum. Oh, I like that pop out. Mm -hmm. Take a simple trick, make it beautiful. Yeah. There we go. All right, finish strong here. <laughs> finish strong. Deshaun. Let's go, let's go. That's right, my boy. I love it. 
You know, that just shows the level of these guys, man. Like, you can't even afford one miss in your run. Like, these guys are that consistent. They're that incredible. Visible replay, gap out, nose blunt. For Deshaun, that's an easy one. Yeah, you said it, Paul. So much power. Yep. Spring, 270, lip. Little sketch, all good. Visible replay. That right there is a guy who's, who's, who's in it to win it. Like, he's not willing to give up on a trick. 6.2, so an improvement, but it's gonna be a, a tough hill to climb in the best trick section. Kelvin Hoffler. Usually Mr. Consistent. But this is the super crown. It's what it takes. He's in. Talk about focus. Uh, Kelvin seems to be, he's always in that mindset. Yeah. Training, wiring his tricks, doing them again and again, going through his line, working it out, timing it, focus. Yeah, he's in the zone. Even right there, like he still pulled that together. That was almost a make. <laughs> yeah, I, like I'm pushing. curious to know what the judges are gonna do with that. Well, it is true, like there's some skaters that recover really well from falls, and then there's some that just do not. Sure, uh, but like, it's also, that was like a hybrid half land, half fall. Yeah, yeah he like yeah. kind of fell, but kind of pushed at the same time. Yeah, so we'll see if they uh, give him a, cut him a little slack for that. But he did a lot in that He's run. Still going. And he didn't miss, he, he didn't fall and then miss any tricks. He, he just had fully like miss bobble. anything, yeah. He yeah. kept the, the flow going. That was, even though that was a really good run, that was pretty conservative for his standards, I'd say. Yeah, I agree. That right there, I, you know, the fact that skateboarding is at a level where a trick like that is done in your run is, blows my mind. So to put it in perspective, Sora is in fourth, and his his line score is a 6.9. So Kelvin with that 7.9 is putting himself in a good spot. Really good spot, especially here in the third heat. Braden Hoban. He finished third last month in Las Vegas, just like that, podium. That gap to 5-0 on that side is actually way bigger than he's making it look. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's interesting for me to be on this side of things because like, I don't know how often it's talked about, but like sometimes the things on this course, on the courses aren't really like put into perspective of what they really are in person. And like that right there, that was heavy. And the, the dimensions on these courses are are intimidating. Yeah, I did see a comment on Street League's Instagram that said, oh, that's cool that they made a smaller course for the finals. Yeah, no, it's 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 really hard sometimes. That right there, that back nose one, that is dangerous. That is scary. <laughs> that, okay. That <laughs> bump the hubba is, is scary. <laughs> wow. So... That run had it all. Like, it's hard to tell how the how far and how high you have to pop to get on that gap to hubba. And to grind up a rail. Yeah, yeah. and then to <laughs> follow it up with that, that's incredible. Brayden Hoban is, uh, he's one to watch, man. This is also, you know, for a guy like Brayden, when you talk about original, you can see that back nose blunt on this Tiger cam. Like, his skating is so original. He doesn't look like anybody else out there. He doesn't skate the course like any, anybody else out there. And that's why he gets those types of scores. 8.9 for his run is amazing. 
I mean, that's an incredible score, and I think it's well, it was well scored. I felt like I could have possibly gotten the club on that one. I wouldn't have been mad at it. I wouldn't have argued it. Felipe back in for a wow. second run, just trying to put it all together here. And that hub is a lot steeper than people might look, might think. Did you cruise this course some? Yeah, I did yesterday a bit, and uh, it's it's intimidating. Like, all right, Felipe's putting it together now. We'll see what kind of score he gets. I don't think he's missed the front side flip in like 10 years. <laughs> But you can see it like these guys, like that first run is kind of almost just to get your nerves out. Wow, if he can just hold together, this is gonna be, I, I'm curious to see what they're gonna score it. That's right, yes. That's my pick, that's my guy. Felipe Gustavo with the flawless run. All right, how does, a, how does a run like this stack up against the Braden Hoban run we just saw? Completely on different sides of the spectrum, both amazing. Yeah. In my opinion, it's, it's right, I, I feel like they're right in the same kind of, the same kind of uh, tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely has to be in the upper eights, if not a nine. Okay, okay. 8.5. Okay. That's his dad, his Pops, giving him some love there. Biggest supporter ever. Famously sold the family car to get him to Tampa Am, where he won, went on to change his life. Great investment. Yeah, right? That's <laughs> a risky investment. move, though. That's a risky one. So what a season it's been so far in SLS. Let's take a look back with the G-Shock time capsule on how it's all gone down. Starting things off in Jacksonville this year. It was the Nyasha Houston. We got to see him for a stop. Yeah. Need to see him again soon. Gustavo Ribeiro. He has been relentless just everywhere. He's had a he's had a great year. And this was Sora's moment right here. He almost came out the gate and got a win, but no, yeah, Uto yeah. had something. Uto, to yeah, Uto wasn't putting up with it. <laughs> and then moving on to Seattle, Washington, with the just massive hubba. Braden Hoban showing us what he was made of there for real. And Desenzo stepping it up. Desenzo, I mean, he's been kind of like a an unsung hero in these in these street leagues. That is such a crazy trick to do in a contest. And Nolly you, you don't three see field it. Flip. Yeah, you don't see it often. And the fact that he did that in the moment, incredible. And then so moving on to Las Vegas, Yuto didn't skate and Nija not skating either. It left the door open for somebody new. Yep. Looked like it could have been, could have been Jagger. Looked like it could have been Calvin, but it wasn't. That course was super, super small. Well, Interesting. It, it was small in, in like width, but the obstacles were not small. Right. They were still deadly. And Which actually made it more difficult to skate because the setup and the speed was was not as much as you would normally have. And that once again, was incredible. Gustavo Ribeiro making it work for him with those feet. Just flinging moves. Yeah. Getting his second SLS win. So it's been a great year. Different, it's been different. And I think a lot of the credit goes to the fact that these courses now are, are not uniform where it's not front side back side in a straight line it's kind of maybe a little bit more mixed up eh. maybe not well eh. they're, they're definitely playing with a lot of angles and different directions on things Yuto getting a little interview love <laughs> down there 
jogo está longe de terminar, tem muito skate para rodar. A gente está na bateria número 3. O Sean Jordan abre os trabalhos aí das Trick Attempts. Take a look. There's the pre-qualified pre finalists for tomorrow's Super Crown Final. Gustavo Ribeiro finishing the season number one in points, followed by the Frenchman, Vincent, Vincent Milou. And then Chris Jocelyn just having, having a great year in Uto, squeaking in in fourth, even only skating two events on the year. Having won both of those, though. So. Technically, yeah, that, that goes a long way. Technically, I would say so, Uto yeah. has, no one's beaten Uto this year. He he's, hasn't lost. Yeah. He's won 50% of the contests, and he hasn't skated 100% of it, which is impressive. <laughs> he's only skated 50%, and he's won that 50%. All right, single trick section, heat number three here in the last chance qualifier. Four skaters will be moving on. Calvin's getting some TV time right now. Sweeping the top of the launcher. Saying hi to some people. I'm curious to know with all the Brazilian skaters here, like how their mindset, if, is it different, not different? Are they more hyped? Are they more nervous being here in Brazil in their, in their home country? Hey, is it always the same for you? Like your reaction to the crowd and the pressure is, is or, or is sometimes, does it make you too nervous? Or in other times it gives you that extra juice? No, uh, the, the crowd and everything, for me personally, wow. Oh, Ooh. sorry, we just, okay. Kick the front nose grind. Yes. But back to what you were saying, the yeah. crowd to me personally has no impact on my nerves. I'm nervous the same every way at every contest because I know who I'm going up against and I know what level of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of skaters that there are in this contest. That's, that's what makes me nervous is okay. like trying to keep up with these guys. Wow, he did that beautifully, perfection. This is the Tiger Cam, kick flip front, nose grind. I can almost guarantee he didn't even do that in practice. I believe you. He's, he's, he's got his tricks dialed in. When he needs them, they're in his pocket. He pulls them out, puts it down, 8.7. The, the crowd is like, nah, that's a nine. We wanted nine. I, I, I agree with them because they gave the kickflip crook to Desenzo, if I'm not mistaken, a nine one. Kickflip nose blunt. Oh, kick. Mm. What was the kickflip crook? I think it was eight three. Eight three. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, ah, kickflip nose blunt, kickflip nose grind. It's uh, difficulty is similar, in my opinion. Felipe Gustavo in next. Put the 8.5 down in the line section. Wow. Ooh, wow. That is just, that's beautiful. Compare uh, like a kick flip, kick flip, uh, sorry, nollie flip 5 0 versus nollie flip no slide or nollie flip crook. In, in my personal opinion, everybody's different, but in my personal opinion, it takes a lot more precision to do a nollie flip backside 5 0, what, what Felipe just did right there, and it's not as common to see it that consistent. There's only a couple guys out here who I can think of that would be able to do this in, in this environment, in this contest. And he did it perfect. He's smiling before he even yeah. landed that. <laughs> did one. you see that? Yeah. He, he smiled right when he locked in. Love that, love that love between the father and son. Nice. 8.6. Sometimes I think when these guys do these tricks that smooth and that good, that almost works against them because they make it look too easy. <laughs> no, there's That's definitely not easy. truth to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah.
Whoa. Wow. What was he trying to Straight go to? Straight foot 50-50. 50. 50. Okay. Looks like he, he kind of had a little tweak on his ankle or something right there. He might have hot pocketed his yeah. ankle on the rail. Kind of had a little, little, little tweak right there. Yeah, I think so. I've yet, we've yet to see anyone hit this curve ledge. It's because that roller actually goes into the curve ledge. So in order to skate it off like a even ground, you have to skate the whole thing. Yeah. And it's I just mean, so hard to piece that together in your line. Yeah, absolutely. Or even as a single, like, I'm curious to know well, how it would score if something was done on it, if they went the whole way compared to something that seems a little more dangerous. I feel like the danger factor adds a point or two, no matter what. But you're a curved, a long curved ledge is going to give you right. some juice. You yes. have danger factor and you have technical factor. It's like it's hard to out. It's hard to say. Calvin's definitely using up all of his shot clock. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you got to do to get your mind right. <laughs> so he's in fifth. He can move up quick from oh, here. He's doing something dangerous. You can see. <laughs> P-Rod was also one of those guys that used up all of his shot clock. <laughs> real recognize real. That's how I could tell. Like, he's, he's about to do something dangerous or something. You got to get your mind right and make sure when you're rolling up, you're ready to go. What would you say to yourself when you pulled the hat down in front of your face? I wasn't saying anything to myself. I was, every time my hat's down in my face, I was praying. Just praying to be safe, protected, praying to be land, you know, land my tricks. That's all. Got to give all glory to God. Respect. There you go. Kickflip crook. So Desenzo got the 8 3 on his kickflip crook. Let's see if we're consistent. Uh, the only thing I could say is Braden maybe caught his kickflip a little better than Desenzo, but still, they both did it perfect. Yeah, I mean, you could not do it better than yeah. what we just saw right there. Yeah. And just to add a little extra, like in that last shot, that last angle, you could see his shirt lifted up on his back, the, the, where the scars were. You could see that's a real skater fall scar, like, Thing. 8.4, so he got a tenth of a point Less. more. Or more. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. That little extra okay, flick. Okay. It's worth a tenth of a point. All right, can, can the skaters in Heat 3 keep it going? They, they seem to be handling it. Line section, good. Tricks going down. Here we go. Oh. All right, so we talk about how the course isn't symmetrical, right? And yeah. That on that hubba for his nollie front side, it is considerably n more narrow, the runway. And so in practice, when he was trying, I was talking to him about it, he can't get as big of an angle as, as he, he would wants like, to, yeah. and it's just a little harder for him to get the nollie flip around into the front nose. It comes down to this right here for Deshaun. He's got to stay on. on. Yes! He does it! Clutch laser. I want to see how this flip trick scores because that's a big set of stairs. It's very long, and a laser flip is a hard trick to control with a catch, and he made that look so effortless. Deshaun is so physically fit right now. You can see in this visible replay, he lands like he's rolling off a curb. Like yeah, it he, looks, he's solid. Looks chilling. He's just, he's one of the most athletic and powerful skaters out there. Sean representing that A shock. There you go. There we go. Nine I club. like that. That's a great score. I totally agree with that. He's in the club. I can see some dance moves about to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Deshaun working his way up, now in eighth. Uh-huh. Kelvin Hoffler. All right, we got to start timing this guy. <laughs> yeah. How long is this going to? I'm not mad at him, man. You got, you, you know, you got, you got to make sure you're, each person has their own different routine and different thing to get their mind right. And 
He's so a veteran. On this course, I've seen you do this, right? You're you're there, you're kicking the the, the imaginary yeah. debris off the top of the yeah. launcher, but that's for your mind. That's less mental. For the it's debris. mental. It's it's O C D at this point. Um there's almost never rocks in front of the <laughs> stairs, but uh I I need to kick the imaginary stairs, the rocks out of the imaginary stairs. Or yeah. imaginary rocks in front of the stairs. I like Sorry. it. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Little, He's little, doing this again. The psych out. I'm telling fake, you. Fake, pump well, fake. I think that that is happening because that obstacle is making him nervous. He's it's it's dangerous. This is what's showing you. Like these guys are pros and they're the best in the world, but like they get scared. It's scary. Doesn't look very scared. Oh. That is that is tough, but he he was in it to win it. Like that's what you that's the type of thing you got to try to to make it. He actually he got out of this slam clean, but yeah. that is some of the hardest slams in skating you'll take is when you accidentally land back on your board. Yes. See, look, my man Braden just right in there. Yeah, he's a uh, wow. Okay. So, uh, he he took a note and he was like, "All right, I saw what the kick with nose grind scored." So the kick flip nose grind scored the eight seven for Kelvin Hoffler. You think he's gonna get a a tenth of a point higher for that flick? Maybe I don't know. That's a that is that like eight, one eight? of the best flicks in the business. An interesting thing to point out right now is that only the top two skaters here made two tricks in single trick until Braden just did. So he's going to wow. go way up there. There he goes. 8.6. He joins Ooh. those top. Desenzo and Eaton, those are the only three skaters to have three scores on the board. That's that, that goes to show how difficult this course is and like the level that everyone's skating at. They're all going for it. They're, they're risking it. Wow, wow. So this is the new rule in Street League, you right? Can't you redo can't redo it. redo it. So the fact that he did land at Sketch, he's going to get docked points. And he's gonna lose out on yeah. doing it. It was a it, it was a slight tic tac. I wouldn't call it a full blown sketch, but yeah, a slight tic tac. But that difficult of a trick in this kind of pressure cooker moment, man, I, I'm not mad at it, but I'm not a judge, so. No, I would be happy if I did that. Oh yeah, I'd be yeah, I'd be celebrating for you weeks. Would, if you I wouldn't did that. see my hands doing the uh uh <laughs> thing. You'd see my hands <laughs> doing the champion. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. celebration. Just the level we're at. I'm curious to see what it's gonna score because that and that's a trick also that you you don't see people doing. Yes, eight point okay. seven. They They're, gave it to him. I, it'd have been a solid nine or more if he if he landed completely clean. But I think they they gave it to him knowing that that's like. You're not going to see anyone else do that out here. So now all four skaters in position to advance to tomorrow are the skaters that have three scores. That's the story. Deshaun Jordan in. Trey for 50. Let's go. Yes! Oh! Yes! Yes! The, the, the bottom fell out of that one, yeah. and he didn't give up. Hey, man. He met that one at the ground. You gotta do what you gotta do in these moments, you know? I mean, that may, that's what makes them these moments, you gotta too. Fight for it. That's the best, I yeah. love that. Clean is great, but sketchy can be even better. In this moment, one try, like, you gotta do it now or never, like, I mean, that's incredible. He's got his backpack, he's ready to roll out. <laughs> Nine even. Okay. I like that. And that That's a back nine. Only gets him into fifth wow. place. Wow. Because of that 6.2 in the line section. But what a great finish. I mean, it goes to show the level that's that's out there.
So Kelvin Hoffler in next. He's in seventh. I'm always curious with Kelvin because you don't see him. Like being out there in practice, he's one of the guys I don't see him doing it. I don't know what he's going to do. So I never know what he's going to go for. Whatever it is, it has to be a 9.3 or better. Maybe he's going to go for that kick the back tail again. I think that'll do it. I, it would be close for sure. goes yeah yep that's nerves right there could have called that one yeah that's nerves that's just like i don't think it's even nerves for the contest in the crowd it's nerves of like the danger the level of danger So Kelvin Hoffler will not be the 2022 Super Crown champ this year. He's not going to the final. And in next, Braden Hoban. Chilling up in third place, but. Yeah, but we still have a fourth heat. Still have that fourth heat, you're right. Needs to get rid of that 8.4. Anything better than that is gonna help his cause. Which is crazy because those are great scores. Wow, oh. wow. And he made that look so smooth and finessed. That would have been, in my opinion, a 100. <laughs> <laughs> a 100 out of a, a scale of 10. Yeah, we have yet yeah. to have a, a, a 10 in, in Street League, but <laughs> that would have just blown right past it to a 100. <laughs> Felipe. Gustavo. Oh, so I, I, I'm calling switch for the back nose grind. Got to be better than an 8.6, and it'll help. Oh, that will be. Yeah. Uh, good call. Even though fourth place normally is a good spot to be in, he's at he's at risk. This next heat. Yeah, it, he is. Very well push him out. You know, Carlos is about to be in the next heat, so you got the heavy hitters. So current standings after three heats of four here in the last chance qualifier, Ryan Desenzo oh, hanging on to that top spot still, followed by Jagger Eaton, Braden Hoban, and Felipe Gustavo. Those are your top four. If the event were to end this moment, they'd be in the Super Crown Final, but it's not over yet. One heat still to go. That's gonna include Shane O'Neill and Jamie Foy. Some heavy hitters. So heat four, first skater coming in will be Carlos Ribeiro. Another Brazilian. Yep. You have to live up to these expectations from the yep. crowd. The way practice went, I will say, I think Jamie Foy might have been the best looking out of everybody yesterday in practice. So I'm really excited to see what he brings. He's uh, he's he's pretty consistent in these contests too. He's he's pretty good at at, at uh, holding it down. Let's talk about this road to the Super Crown. The top four skaters there in gold are pre-qualified based on season points into tomorrow's final. Gustavo Hibero, Vincent Malou, Chris Joslin, Yuta Horigome, they don't have to skate today. They're pre-qualified in. Everybody else is trying to make the top four cut to join them tomorrow and get a chance to become the 2022 Super Crown champion. Now let's take a look at that journey to the top four presented by BB Seguros. Wow. This is how the top four made it through the three events here this year. Yuto, 
coming out in Jacksonville, getting it done, of course. And then we were in back in Seattle. Seattle. Back to back wins for Utah. Wow. It was so fun watching Chris Jocelyn this year. He's been on mission this year, super focused. And just so many times Staying it came off. together at the last minute for yep. him. I mean, that right there is incredible. That gap was, it was very difficult to skate. Wow. Oh, one try, he had that last try with the bigger spin flip, bolts. Sometimes you just need that moment to, to give you that extra commitment. I really have loved Vincent Malou skating these past couple of years, and it seems like this year for the contest, it's coming all together for him. And he's expanding his bag of tricks, which is cool. Yeah. It's really, it's like watching him evolve as a skater. Yep. That, that's a trick nobody does, and to do it on that, incredible. I asked him too, I was like, can you pop shove back Smith this thing? He was like, I don't know, man. And then the final start, he just did it. He had to. Sometimes you just need that extra motivation. And then this kid, Gustavo Hibero, he's on fire. He's a technician. He, he's almost always good for making his tricks. You got to beat him. He's not going to fall his way to out of the out of the cut. No, he's always going to be a contender. Contest legend. So that's the journey to the top four, presented by BB Seguros. And now we're gonna check in with Andrew Cannon, who's standing by with Chris Jocelyn. Chris, you are already qualified into tomorrow, but you've been watching the competition. Who do you want joining you in that top eight tomorrow? Well, I think Desenzo earned the top spot he's in. I wanna see my boy Braden in there, Felipe, Jamie. I think those would be my top four right there. I was going to say, if you start listing more names, we're getting our mask going to be all funky. Now, you have been watching all of it. Have you changed your strategy based off of how things are scoring? No, I already kind of came in like planning to just try the hardest run I can since it's straight into the finals. And I think what I've got planned out in my head is pretty, pretty up there, I'd say. Can you uh, can you let us in on it at all? Anything you want to share with the with everyone at home so they tune in tomorrow to see it? I got a lot of flip tricks. All right, you're gonna be you're gonna be flipping your board a lot. So everyone, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Watch Chris Jocelyn kicking butt in the Super Final. It's gonna be exciting. Back to you. It'll be fun to see Chris Jocelyn and the other top four skaters tomorrow in the Super Crown Final. And we have one more heat still here in the last chance qualifier before we know who's gonna join them. As things stand, Ryan Desenzo, Jagger Eaton, Braden Hoban, and Felipe Gustavo are in those top four spots. I feel like the only one who's actually safe is Desenzo. I think anyone else could actually potentially get pushed out. Skaters from heat number four, Carlos Ribeiro will be the Let's first go, one Carlos. in from Brazil. Everybody's favorite. Represent Primitive. Nicest guy ever. And of course, founding SLS Pro, going way back to 2010, yes, Shane O'Neill, 2016 Super Crown champ. And the 2018 Skater of the Year, winner of Tampa Pro this year, Jamie Foy. Another one you can't help but root for. Midler. Alex Midler. This is his second year as an SLS Pro. Skated the Super Crown last year and finished eighth, trying to get back there. All right, here's the updated graphic, giving credit where credit is due. Thank you, Street League, I appreciate that. Going all the way back to 2011, Sean Malto, Scroll Super back. Crown World Champion. Whatever it was called back then, he was the world champion and will always be a world champion. I appreciate that, Paul. Yeah, no, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm honored to be sitting be between two absolute legends. This is great. It's fun. So, Carlos Ribeiro. He hasn't had the results in the last few events that we want to see from Carlos. We want to see him stay on. What's it going to take? Yeah, I think he has everything it takes. Uh, just to note that, 
he is coming off a very serious ankle injury that took him almost a full year to recover. So he's still not even full back at full power. But he's here to compete. He's looking good. I was with, I was at dinner with him last night talking about his, uh, his ankle. And he did say he was feeling the best it's ever felt for this contest. Beautiful. Oh. But what, how, talk about the mental process, though, of coming back from injuries. You can definitely talk to that one, Sean. Yeah, it is one of those things where, you know, you start to doubt yourself on things that you never doubted yourself on before. And it's just because you're out of the repetition of doing it over and over and over and over again. And you go through an injury, it changes. One, you can't skate for a very long time. And then two, you have to tailor your skating in certain ways because your body doesn't move the way it used to. Um, and, you know, it just takes a lot of time and patience. And then fear factor creeps, it can creep in too, where you're like, I don't Always, know. Yep. Been there. So Carlos putting down some tricks here in his first line of two. Okay, scores okay. 6.9. Let's Decent, put this in perspective, though. Felipe Gustavo, who's sitting in fourth. Now, he's the guy we got to be looking at everybody catching. His line score was an 8-5. Right. That, I believe that was his second run, too. Yes. A lot of these guys need to shake the nerves on the first run. So we'll see how it goes. I'm always looking for the second run. Shane's a really good run skater. It's rare that he uh, messes up a, a, a run. Ooh, a little late. Boom. Straight back to the feet. Heard me talk about his tray flip. He was like, check <laughs> this out. What makes him as good as he is? What is it? If I knew the answer, I'd be as good as him. <laughs> so he's just born with it. No, he works hard. He it's works combo. hard. Nobody can get there without the hard, hard work. No, he, he skates, he's, he's a skate rat. He works hard, skates a lot, he's very focused, takes care of his body. Um, and, you know, he just always he stays curious, stays trying to learn new things all the time. If anybody seems to be either blazing hot or ice cold, though it's Shane. He will let, like we talked about how Kelvin can recover from a, from a fall. Shane is less prone to recover mentally. He kind of will just give it up sometimes. But we don't need that right now. He's ripping, he's killing it. Yeah, don't yep, even talk yep. about that. Well, Shane knows the game. He yeah. is very calculated. He knows that if he doesn't average, an 8.6. It's not worth wasting not your energy to yeah. keep trying to recover your run. So there's part of him that when he falls and he feels like he's not going to get that score, it's better just to give it all up. Makes sense. Jamie Foy, raw power. Go for it. Get on those rails. Jamie Foy. Doing that classic Jamie Foy, working his way through. I love nice. that no slide, yep. Peggy. Looks just so uh, soothing. Wow. That trick in your run is, to me, incredible. Time for one more. Oh, I think he'll get that in the next run. Good run till the end, but that was a key key trick in his run. If you're going to talk about sure. scores. Yeah, if he did that, that would have been an incredible score. This trick right there, like the precision just to get it on just enough of your truck to make it a 180 nose grind because he so easily could have slipped in the front nose side. Five point one. 
So it definitely comes down to the second line. Yep. Needs to be needs to be up in the eight, eight plus at least. And Alex Midler, the most wild card. The wildest one out here. Guy. Not a care in the world. Nope. That's that's a hefty trick to start off with. Leaving the beanie on the ground, let's keep it moving. He's almost as wild as his fits. <laughs> I'd say his fits are trying to keep it with him. <laughs> Depends on the day. <laughs> All right. Finishes with a few makes back to back. Good. But keep that keep those makes in mind. Yeah. Get yeah. rid of those falls. Take it in the next line. Uh, Midler, he's an all or nothing kind of guy. He never plays it safe. Ever. Maybe you should leave the beanie off. I felt like he was landing more tricks with the beanie off. Well, we only got to see him try one trick with the beanie off. And he didn't land it. Or with me on. He makes 0% of the tricks right now with the beanie on, so. Yeah. <laughs> Statistically speaking. <laughs> All right, Carlos. He figured most of it out in his first line, and this is where, like you say, Paul, he's got to just bring it all together and there stay we go. home. Yes. Oh. Dang it. Love a good switch back, Smith. Gotta love a good switch back, Smith. There we go, Carlos pulling it together. Let's see if he'll score higher than his last run. Okay, switch and regular, Smith's in his run. Whoa! Uh. <laughs> Hopefully that was after time. See, I think with this format, with the format change this year where a line score counts, you know, sometimes you're, you're out. By the time you get to best, best trick, you're out. Tiger cam, angle of that back over crook, beautiful switch from blunt. I'm not, I'm not gonna claim he's out, but it's tough to make up any run with a fall you right really now. You really gotta like make all your single tricks if you want a chance after this. Yeah, I mean. And they gotta all be heavy scores. At least nines. Yeah. No, it, it definitely, definitely makes things more challenging. 7.0. Being it's, in the it's fourth. It's still better than his last one. What did he get, a 6.7, 6.9 six, six, nine last six, time? 6.9. Nine. Six, he went okay. up a 10. All right. 7. It's respectable. Take a look down there. Founding SLS pros from day one that are still actively competing in SLS. Nigel Houston, Shane O'Neill, who's about to skate. Luan, T-Puds, and... Paul Rodriguez, That's, hey. that is rare company. That is so impressive, because you got to stay at the highest level for all that time. That's tough. It's tough, man. How do you do it? It's all glory to God, man. I can't explain, you know, just love skating. You keep trying, you go through injuries, and you keep, keep going. Do you guys remember the first SLS event you skated Absolutely. together? The first one. You remember the, how about the first one? Where where was that one? What was, was that? that, what was that, Arizona? I think so. It, it was I Arizona. Think, yeah. Glendale. Yeah. Glendale. No, 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 it wasn't Glendale the first one, no. It was, okay. I guess we don't remember it as, yeah. as well as we thought. I don't know. Sorry, Paul, you tell me. <laughs> you got the stats right here, you tell me. No, let, me let me dig in. It was a lot different then. The format was completely different. The scoring system was way different. Do you, did you like the evolution to where it, where it got to, or did you like that old old format where it's jumping around, you know, impact? Um, you know, I don't know if I have a preference for the how it was then or how it was now. I, I feel like at the end of the day, the cream will rise to the top. You know, whoever is 
in there to win it, who's on that day, they're going to be the ones who's going to win, you know? Yeah. I will say the original format did allow for a more um, eclectic mix of skating. Yeah, I feel like it's maybe this narrows narrows the options because less can. counts. Uh, yeah, and then right, you would, you'd have a section where you're just skating the bench. You, so you had your tech section, precision section, run section. You know, there was different things, and you know, made it for a much longer contest. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like just if you're if you're built for it, you're gonna you're gonna rise to the top, whatever the format is. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't think he can. Yeah, he's done, huh? We can still still enjoy some single tricks. That's uh, that's how we're gonna. Have to look. I'll always enjoy watching. Jamie Foy skate. Big boy Foy. Always a good time. So line scores here so far in heat number four are, I think they may be giving Felipe Gustavo a really good chance of, of holding on to that spot unless things change. All right, let's see if Midler can break the beanie curse. <laughs> there, there we go. Goes. Curse now officially he's broken. 50%, oh, oh, never mind. Now he's back to whatever the <laughs> percentage is. I can't do math that fast. 33.3. <laughs> wow, oh. okay, he's, he's, now he's back to 50%. <laughs> there he goes. Uh, I don't know, that was... <laughs> He That's pulled it. He pulled it. Yeah. He pulled it. He pulled it. Alex Midler coming in with a 4.1 on his second line. And again, that's just not really going to get him where he needs to be. Nice. Taking Unless a look at pulls all nine. Shane with single tricks still to come. And, and we were talking about how relationships on the tour are a big deal. They matter. You want to be out here with your friends. And we recently caught up with Shane and Yuto to find out a little bit about how they came to be so close. The first time I heard about Yuto was on Instagram. People used to tag me in all his posts. And I always noticed because it was like day after day and he was like copying the tricks I was doing or just, you know, going to his park and doing them. I was working on some board stuff and I ended up thinking about maybe hitting him up. That day, like, I got like a uh, contract with Brian. And the next day he DM me. I mean, he say like, oh, what's your board company? Like, I thought it was like, like a dream. Cause like when I woke up and then I saw the DM, it was Shane O'Neill. I was like really surprised. I DM'd him on Instagram. I was like, hey, I like your footage. Um, let me know if you need any help. And he messaged me back saying he just got on blind. And but yeah, I was just like, oh, cool. If you ever need any help, let me know. And that was that. And then eventually it all worked out. Yeah, that's really crazy. Like when I was young, my favorite skater is Shane. And then now it's like I'm skating with him the contest. Oh, actually no, this one's craziest. Switch double triple. I thought that trick is impossible, but he did it at the contest like really perfect. He got like 9.9 .9 something. When I see that trick, I was really like, oh my god, so crazy. 
here's the thing with Utah. He was for sure destined to do well in contests. Like he's just built for it. He skated vert when he was young. He um, can do all these crazy different weird tricks. 3D is my dream contest. And then that I'm skated with Shane, like Nigel Paul, like it's really crazy and like I still can't believe it. Street League Skateboarding has been brought to you by Bow Clothing. We make noise, not fashion. Everyday clothes for outstanding people. By True Skate. True control, true skill, true skate. Coming to Steam next week. And by G-Shock, the official watch of the SLS World Tour. Head to gshock.com to see the world's toughest watches. to Olympic Park. This is the last chance qualifier for the men at the World Championship here in Rio. Let's take a look at the Skater XL, highest scored line of the day here. Felipe Mota, the youngster, getting it done with a 9.0 even in the line section. It's hard to get a nine in your run. He made it look easy. Everything has to come together and like, it can't be a series of whatever tricks. It's gotta be high level. High level tricks done to perfection with no falls. 9.0, Felipe Moda, Skater on, XL. High on scored young a primitive, primitive board. That's right, baby. Good choice. You'll see Gustavo Ibero skating tomorrow in the final. He finished first in points. Got to skip this last chance qualifier altogether. It's a good spot to be in. Current standings as we move into the single trick section here in heat number four. Ryan Desenzo up on top, followed by Jagger Eaton. Braden Hoban and Felipe Gustavo. Those skaters will be skating tomorrow unless one of the skaters here in heat number four can knock them out of there. I think, I mean, Felipe Gustavo might be the only one who's oh, even within range. Statistically uh, available to do it, huh? Car I think Carlos and Shane are the only two that can maybe get there. Yeah, they can they can get there. All right. Yeah, he needs some 9.2s. Oh, bring him back the old faithful. As Yuto would say, the impossible trick. You know, one thing we haven't talked about yet is not only are these four skaters who make it today going to the finals, but they're facing the four best guys of the year on completely fresh legs. That's true. Oh, that is a good point. That's a great point. How much, though, do the fresh legs get overshadowed by the fact that these skaters put in the work today and they, they're riding that confidence boost of having gotten gotten it done, you know? Soreness doesn't uh, play favorites. If you're sore, you're sore, regardless of confidence or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I guess it depends on age, depends on how, how you take care of yourself tonight. It depends on a lot of factors, you know? But, you know, they're here to compete. And the cream will rise to the top. Yeah, and I think the four guys that are already qualified for tomorrow, I, I don't think there's any lack of confidence coming from those yeah. guys. Good no. point. Good point. All right. Second single trick attempt. Carlos Ibero. Oh, that, I really want to see what that would score. Very difficult trick. Switch heel back 5-0. I lost uh, some money to him at practice. I saw that, yeah. That Bet him all the money in my pocket. He wouldn't do it on that try, and he switched heel back five. <laughs> nice. $101. $101 it was. That's right. I like that. 
right, Shane with the impossible maneuver. Very hard. Switch double tray flip. Well, he has two more tries at it. So, Jamie Foy with a 5.1 run score means, yeah, he is officially not able to catch up to Felipe Gustavo. Maybe we should talk about Desenzo a little bit. I love it. I love seeing him. Uh, you know, qualifying first right now, like, you know, as a fellow old guy. I love seeing it. <laughs> yeah. I love seeing it, you know, it just goes to show, man. It's very, very rare to qualify first out of the first heat, too. Oh, true. yeah, true. Good point. The first heat is the toughest heat to skate. Double disadvantage, because yeah. the judges are keeping the scores low, maybe, and you don't know what's coming, so you have to just throw it all out there. Yeah, absolutely. It, you know, and also, not that's not a knock against the judges. It's just they don't know what's coming either, so they don't know the scores haven't been calibrated yet. Right. They're forced to keep them low. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, it's the classic overcorrect. You miss one under, and yep. Then you make sure to get it over there, and you miss it on the top side. So Carlos is officially out. Shane O'Neill, he could still get it done. It's gonna have to happen right here. Oh! Stuck it, just caught it a little bit with the tippy toes. Yeah. So Shane officially out, but we hope to see that on his final try. Shane's looking good. He has his jewelry on. He's chilling. Ooh, okay. It's it, that toe side carve. Sometimes I just, I don't understand the design. Because like, why wouldn't you make it so that you can easy access the obstacle? I mean, it is called Street League. Sure. Make it a little street style. I mean, it's street. That thing's big. It's scary. <laughs> and it makes it even worse when, you know, you don't have proper access to it. <laughs> yeah. Next next course, it might be building cracks in there. Skate might stoppers. Might as well at this point, you know. Security guards. Security guards. Make the grass area a little bigger. Put a soccer field in there. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Midler. Add random pedestrians just walking <laughs> through the park. You know? Knob some rails. All right. Last, last attempt in front of the home crowd here for oh Carlos Ibero. The crowd wants it. Oh! oh! He went for the switchback Smith right there. He switched it up on us. He almost had it, actually. I wonder if he should have been trying that from the beginning. We're going to have to wait until 2023 to find out. Wow. So, Felipe Gustavo on your screen, feeling it, getting congratulated on locking in his spot into Sounds tomorrow's Sounds like they Super did the Prime. math, yeah. Yeah. Numbers don't lie. He's in. Oh! Shane getting tech on us. Why not? He must have right, been listening. Shane, hold it down for the techies. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, somebody has to hit this <laughs> at least once. They built it. Well, you know. Two skaters left in this last chance qualifier. One try apiece. 
Jamie Foy. Wow. Oh, talk about switching it up. Wow, he went for the fakey switch from Blunt. Fakey back nose one. I don't know what the proper name is. It's uh, either. Sometimes it's right. the name of these tricks is just as hard as the tricks. <laughs> you know? I mean, I do just love the idea scary. of <laughs> yeah. just giving them names. <laughs> call, it a, call it a boy blunt. Yeah. I like fakey back nose one. I think that sounds cool. OK. All right, Midler. Finish strong. Enough of this place. Look at the emotion there from Felipe Gustavo. Yes, I love it. I love Shows it. you how important this is and how 100%. much work it takes to get there. This isn't easy. 100%. I love it. Take a look at the final results here from the last chance qualifier. Wow. Ryan Desenzo finishing Ooh. on top with a 26.2 for Canada, followed by two Americans, Jagger Eaton and Braden Hoban. And the home country hero right now, Felipe Gustavo, locking in his fourth place spot and guaranteeing he'll be skating tomorrow in the final. That's right, baby. Big ups to Ryan Desenzo, reaching that A-Shock reach your peak moment, qualifying in first place. That is huge. He is on fire. Love it. I love it. He's still got a lot to give, and he's doing it here in Rio. And the kickflip crook. He just had it all, all day long and then finishing with the kickflip nose blunt slide. That's how you qualify in first place. Incredible. I love it. A shock. Reach your peak. A shock, baby. Let's go. Let's take a look at tomorrow's start list. Felipe Gustavo, today's fourth place qualifier, will be coming in first, followed by Braden Hoban, Jagger Eaton, Ryan Desenzo, today's number one. And then the tour leaders, Yuto Horagome, Chris Joslin, Vincent Malou, and Gustavo Ribeiro from Portugal. So that is going to do it for all of us from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. You've been watching the 2022 SLS Super Crown World Championships Last Chance Qualifier. So for Paul Rodriguez, Sean Malto, Andrew Cannon, and everyone at Street League, I'm Paul Zitzer. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll see you tomorrow. It's finals day from Rio.